Welcome to The Corner. Okay. This is a corner. Can we get like, can get like the thing goes better? You are here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Ding, ding. That's not even what I want. You are here in the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty low. Oh, it is. Oh, that's at a hundred. That's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. That was at a hundred too. All right, I like this mic better, so we're gonna use that. Uh. Was that good? Was that good? No, no, he was he better was off doing the sing portion. Ah, oh, man, that's crazy. crazy. Yo, Yo, we got, yeah, uh, uh, I, I hate, hate this, this echo. echo. God, God is killing me. me. All right, look, while he's doing that, y'all, look. Thank, thank you. you. We hey, got Ann Williams in the corner. building. Wait, welcome wait, to the corner, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the corner. Yet yeah, another episode of the corner. Last show of the month is always on the corner. You as the loyal listener. Jump on and join, join us to talk about whatever you want. You want to rant about your boss. You want to talk about your favorite team. You want to talk about the bullish that's going on in your section. Or if you got beef with some of the members of the UPC, like Nicholas Jackson, all right, put his name out there, Mad Morris or whoever, you want to talk about it's live here on the corner with your boy Philly DC as a co-host and then beat whenever he get his microphone squared away. So thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're all welcome. You're all welcome. Shout out Faith Donovan and Williams, Samel Brown in the building. Shout out to y'all. Give us something in the comments. Yeah. what's going on with you, fam? Did you, get, did you get my text while the intro was going on? Yeah, you said oh, okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You want to talk about that real quick? No. Okay. That was that's just the whole that point was, of promotion. No, that was just, was just for, you. for you. That wasn't for everybody. Uh, but we'll wait till more people get on because if not, we'll be promoting over and over and over and over. Oh, okay. I'm, Man, I'm shut up. up. Hey. All right. I'm trying to get my mic. God, God this ear. Your, your, your stuff don't echo. No, no, that's, that's why you busy. You, you busy trying to put special effects on their new ones. You ain't got your sound right. <laughs> Come on, man. Look, y'all, y'all starting already. First of all, we never stop. Tony, <laughs> Renee. It always happens. What's up, girl? Tony Renee, one of the coolest cats, gals I know. Coolest yeah. cat gals. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This, this echoing is gonna, is gonna kill me. Oh, Anyway, hey, so I was saying earlier, man, this is the last show of the month. We do the corner every time. We always get some crazy people that come on. If you have never been on your corner, here's your opportunity. Don't be shy. We're going to take good care of you. Usually, we let you on. You are the front runner. You are the guest. So if you want to just cut, if anything, to just get on, sound off and be like, you know what, Philly, D.C.? I can't stand the fact when people park in the gas station, they don't get gas, they just walk in the shop at. I'm waiting for gas. Or you pull up to the shop at, and you're about to get some gas, and you're low, and it says, we're all out of premium, but they got a rent. You know what's funny? You bring that up. So yesterday, uh, we were out running around and stuff, and uh, I pull up to the gas station, and all the spots to park to get in the gas station were full. So I pull up to the pump, but I just wanted to get something inside. Ooh, we. I thought I was going to get assassinated. What you mean? Because you know I got a test. Gas station pump? Yeah. So I'm taking a pump. You better know me then, huh? So yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I'm taking a pump up, and ooh, we. This dude came out and was like, your car don't even take gas. You taking a pump. But the pump is more full. The pumps weren't full. What are you doing? You deserve that one. You yo, deserve that one too. You, yo, you part of the problem, bro. Chief Burton. Oh. Chief Burton in the building. What's going on, Chief? Uh, yo, the, all the parking spots were full, so I had to do something. Nah, man, it ain't, 
it ain't that simple. Play it's not game. like I wanted to. I just did. Uh, what's Faith Donovan? What's up, Faith Donovan in the building? I just hope y'all talk about ACC shaving waiver posted this week. Interesting oh, to hear. Yes, I let's talk about that one. Educating. I missed it. I missed it. Yeah, let's talk about that one. I want to see if I can find Yo, favorite, you talking about was on the Airman NCO page. They posted it. Different part. <laughs> Yo, Tony, there was no parking spots. I just wanted to go inside, get something, and leave out. Like, I know it was wrong. I get it was wrong. But, but I had, I had to, do to do something. I had to do something. My man in the building. Shout out Fetty Kendrick. You're part of the entitled privileged population to think you can just do something like that and just get away with it. You got to mess the throat. You don't what need to be near the pump. What my man Freddie said. I feel it. It's being like that needing parking spots. I need a parking spot. Well, you deserve all the evil glances and snick snickers or whatever they give you because of that. Calm down. Calm down. It ain't that serious. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. You're part of the problem. All right. Faith, uh, Faith gave us a short version. ACC commander uh, said all members will shave. Reg- oh, wow. Oh, okay, I so say, let me make sure I clarify that. So when you say, I'm gonna well, look it up. Hey, okay, okay, yeah, look it up. So, so, so Faith, jump in if, if I'm missing something. So, I think what he's saying is, even though you have a shaving wave, you have to shave, but that doesn't mean cleanly shave. I think that means, you know, it says, and I think that's the controversy. It's like when people have a shaving wave where they assume they don't have to shave at all. But there's nothing that says they can't shave, there's just got to be no more than a quarter of an inch. So I think what ACC is trying to say is you still have to shave. It's just you don't have to cleanly shave. Am I wrong? Jump in and let me know if I'm missing something. I'm not, I'm not seeing it. I'm still looking. Hold on. Faith, if you have it, send us the link so we can take a look at it. Meantime, why don't you put the link to join the show in the chat? So I'm glad you said that. We're going to have to do it different. Uh, if you want to get on the show, let me know. I have to inbox you how to get on the show instead of just putting it on there because people can't find it when I do it like that. So I'll just have to inbox you personally, which is no problem, but I'm not seeing anything about shade. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I found it. Uh, in accordance with that. No, 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 it's alcohol. Andy Gilbert. What's up? Big AG. What's up? Retired AG. What's going on, brother? I'm still looking. Chief golf. What's going on? Uh, big shout out to you. I need to find something else because that's too long. Uh, okay. that's God, dog, I can't find it. I can't. Oh, wait, wait. Would you, if you're the commander, be no, 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 no. AG, AG, we doing good, man. AG, the, the AG, Andy Gilbert man is like another member of the Wu Tang clan. <laughs> Y'all know what Wu Tang had like, like 50 members. <laughs> AD is like one of Wu Tang. He may not be at every show, but he gonna be. He shows up. He shows up. <laughs> happy birthday to you, by the way. Happy birthday. It's been a while. But I don't want to get on the show. I want my T-shirt. I wait, Chief. I got you. I got you. I know I've been saying that, but I got you. Deserve that one. ACC Commander. <laughs> Uh, he will. He will. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me see. When was this? When was this? Four minute read. Oh, this is June nineteenth. So why are you doing that? I'm just curious where everybody thoughts is on the comments. Like, do you guys? I did a speech the other day at JBSA Randolph, and I kind of touched on it a little bit. Topic was professional bond. There's a perception perception that that some some airmen airmen feel like like this this new new policy or enforcement of standards from ACC is a direct direct assault on folks with shaving waivers. Do y'all think, do y'all agree with that? I would tell you, I don't. I think what they're doing, I think we talked about this a couple of shows ago, is what we should be doing anyway. It's enforcing the standard. And... I think, I think this, this idea, idea when people get a shaving waiver, they don't have to shave at all. That's, that's part, part of the problem. problem. 
I mean, it doesn't say you don't shave. It's just a shaving waiver. And maybe I'm interpreting it wrong, but you can still shave it down to an acceptable length. The problem is, is everybody grows their beards a different way. You got some that's got the gold teeth with no hair here. You got some people with big hair here with a lot of Afro hair here. It's like all over the place. I've seen okay. some pretty professional, clean shaven people with a shaving waiver, like some sharp looking people. There was a captain last night who was a chaplain who had a shaving waiver, but his looked dark. It was like real thin, but you can tell it was like, you know, professionally kept. So I think it's possible. I found it. Let me uh, pull it up on the screen. Share that. And boom. Okay. Zip. Yeah. yeah. Considering information coming out, yet another ACC base. According to sources, the 824th Base Defense Squadron at Moody Air Force Base is going to enforce a rule that appears to not recognize valid medical shaving waivers. Apparently, they will allow airmen to follow mustache AFI rules, which is odd to say blah, 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 uh, appearance over blah, blah. Okay, basically, it's Starting 23 September, all military members will be clean shaved, regardless of the shaving waiver. There are two exceptions. One, uh, have a religious shaving waiver uh, in hand and on your person at all times. Two, you wear a mustache within regulation according to AFI. So it says clean shaved. I've seen this. I remember somebody in the comments was Jumping all over for misspelling rags instead of rags. <laughs> so thought- Shout out Matt Morris being in the building. Uh, so first thoughts is a bunch of BS. Um, I don't understand why they're coming after shaving so big. Is that the only thing we need to focus on in, wor- in the world right now? And when you have to put out policies about it, that makes it even worse. Like, I don't know, man. Have a have a chief meeting, commanders meeting. Just tell everybody shave, man, and have a good day. Like, get on your people, make sure they shave. Your thoughts? I don't think it's that simple. I think if, to your point, if you say instead of putting out policy, why not talk to the commanders and supervisors? I mean, the, the policy is out there. The only difference is, if I'm not mistaken, AFI doesn't say that you have to be clean shaven with a shaving waiver. That's an interesting part. I missed that part. So that's going to be a tough one because I think the purpose of the shaving waiver is for them not to follow the normal shaving standards. And I think including that is in having, you know, be clean and shaven. But I think what, and maybe... They're not They're stupid. Not like, if this is coming from ACC leadership, right. trust and believe they had some guidance from legal and they had some guidance from medical. And they 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 went back and forth and covered all bases before they put this out. So for the folks that's, that's interpreting it a certain way, saying it's a mad assault on beards, maybe it is. But is it wrong? I don't see nothing wrong with it. I mean, let's be honest. Come on, man. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Can you honestly tell me and the folks listening that waivers have not gotten out of hand? I I, I guess I'm not that invested in it to see if it's gotten out of hand, nor have I ever kept track from what happened before to say it's gotten out of hand. Uh, Faith real quick said, my thing is, if commanders don't want it, they don't sign it. They're not gonna go. They're not gonna that's go against medical one. professionals. Yeah, that's a, that's, they can, but that's a tough one. They may, or may not. Uh, but to say that you have to clean to clean changes what could be true medical conditions is where the terminology needs to be cleaned up. The clean shave. I, I mean, what is clean shave? Does that mean only with a straight razor? With a razor? Shout out Chief Wooten for being in the building. Are you going to do this every time somebody <laughs> comes to the building? I'll be in the building. Okay, I'll find you. Man. I, I, but I want to give shout out to the people that are watching the show, you freaking can you flopping like, hater. Wait, can you wait like in between thoughts? You got to do it every single time. Anyway. Calm down. So as I, as I continue, just fair fact for everybody, the stepchild or the immature person is the person 
to the other side. Shave out your chest. That's all I'm saying. So, clean shaven to me means, I mean, obviously no hair on your face. That's what it means to me. Um, I do agree with Faith when she says the terminology needs to be changed. And I think the, I think it's, I think it's, wrong for ACC, or unfortunate, that's the probably better word, for ACC to be the front runner of this, because it really should be the big Air Force. And I guess big Air Force will probably think there's no need to do this. The standard is already out. But the standard is out, but it is not easily interpreted or understood. And I think ACC, and not only that, there's, a, there's an argument it should be more strict, I guess. So I think uh, that's, that's part of the problem. problem. There you go. Uh, is being clean shaved a part of the waiver process? That's number one. Uh, two is uh, now they're about to have members with aggravated skin. Thank for you. what reason? Can you post a screenshot of policy in the comments? I have so, so, let me, so let me say this. Coming as a man who, who's had a shaving waiver and I still have like PFB to some degree. I won't dispute that. There's everyone's different. Some people break out worse than others. I think the key is, I think what's missing is an alternative. And what I mean by alternative is it's just like if I have a shit, if I have a waiver because I can't run, what is the alternative? You walk, you go to physical therapy. You try to strengthen whatever portion of your body is injured so you can again run. If you can run, do you get a permanent waiver or whatever help us after that? But for a shaving waiver, the way it is now, you get a shaving waiver, you're, you're set for five years. There's no follow-up. There's no, okay, what's the treatment plan? There's nothing. It's just a waiver. So let me ask you this. After you get the waiver for five years, and after the five years is over, how do you renew it? You go back to the doctor, they look at your face, they give you another shaving waiver for five years. I think me, that is the issue. What is the treatment plan? And then here's my thing, and I'll, I'll say this real quick. If there is no treatment plan, just let everybody wear a beard. Simple as that. It's almost, it's almost, I feel like the, the leadership has just said, I'm agnostic, agnostic. just give me waivers. Agnostic. Uh, she said, is there a, a, way, a shaving clinic or a process to determine if a waiver is needed? Not no more? No, not anymore. When I first came in, I had a waiver. There was a shaving clinic. You know, there was a doctor that you had to shave in front of. You had to show them that you could pull out the ingrown hairs and all that stuff. But that doesn't exist anymore, yeah. I would, I would say, say some, some people, people think, think it shouldn't exist. exist. It's, it's like, why? How can a doctor tell me how to take care of my face? All right, Faith wanted to come on the show, so here she is. Before that happened, shout out Nikki Drago, Chief Drago, and Felicia Ferguson for being on the show. Faith, what's good? Hey, what's up, guys? Yay. Let me get Kendrick's. Let me get Kendrick's comment in there. Uh, for me, my doc. Had me go through two follow up prior to issuing the file. Oh, that must be good. When would you get your waiver? Yeah, when would you get your waiver? Because I didn't have to do that. But go ahead, Faith. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm good. So, so here's here's, here's, here's the, the thing, thing, right? From a from a, from a supervisor's supervisor standpoint, standpoint um, looking, looking at implementing, implementing a, change a change like, like that, that, right? right? Um, um, one, you, you have, have to balance caring, caring for your airmen, airmen and, and following a standard. standard. Right. right. So, so, and that's, and that's hard, hard to do when you, when you feel, feel a push, push from, from the, the top, top saying, hey, hey, oh, these fuck me. When you feel a push from the top, the top, the top I'm, I'm trying, trying to get you some. Um, <laughs> when you feel a push from the top saying, hey, yeah, yeah you got to be clean shaven, even, even if it's once a week, week or whatever the case may be. Right. What is the intent? And that's why I say the terminology has to be changed. If the fact is, is that. Shaving, shaving waivers, waivers have gotten, gotten out of hand, hand or, or that they're just, they're just not, not being followed, followed properly. properly. Um, I don't know, I don't if, know you've if you've seen, seen one recently, recently uh, but, but it, it does, does say that you are supposed to, that you are supposed to clip your, your hair down, down to less, less than a quarter of an inch, inch at least once, once a week. week. Most, most of them, them right? right? I've seen four or five different versions and most of them say that you're supposed to clip it down to at least a quarter of an inch once a week. 
Well, then that means that that there's there's supervisors supervisors and first shirts shirts or, you know, know, leaders of any kind, kind, frontline or otherwise, senior senior and CEOs CEOs that are walking around letting their airmen not do that. And then then it's it's getting getting abused, abused, whether whether it's it's for a year, year, six months, months, whatever the case may be. Right. But then the the next step is, is what is in the best interest of my airmen, though? Right. How do I properly care for my airmen and make sure that they're getting the care that they deserve? Medical, medical or otherwise, or otherwise. And, then and then from a 30,000-foot 30, view, view, if, if now, now we're retracting, retracting in some, some way, shape, or form as leadership, leadership on shaving waivers, what's next? Mm-hmm. Right? right? We, we, we can, can get, get back, back, to back to standard, standard with complete, complete, with, without, without completely, completely redacting. redacting. Right. right. We, we can, can get, get back, back to standards without, without saying, saying, hey, you, you know, know what? what? First, we're going to we're going to back up on shaving waivers and we're going to say, hey, that, you know, shaving waivers, you need a clean shave because that's that's, that's our preference as leaders and leaders. And leaders we, we all we know all commanders know. can make regulations, regulations more strict. strict. They can't they make them easier. easier right. right? But then, but then what's to say they're, they're not going to go back to saying females, females can't, can't have ponytails and then, hey, you have to have certain things a certain way. Like they can still make it more strict. At what, At what point, point is, is the standard, the standard really, really the issue compared, compared to the lack of discipline, discipline. Mm. And, the and the lack of accountability? Of accountability. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's I think that's, that's the main part. part but I think the, yeah. always, always the argument is like, okay, if I have troops and I give my troops LORs for not having shaving waivers, right? And then mm-hmm. Billy has troops and he's just talking to his people. And we're in the same squadron. Word gets around, so it's not equal uh, accountability is the problem. And no, so it's like, go ahead. But you and I both know that Airman Snuffy and Airman Fluffy need two different things. So we can't. It doesn't have to be paperwork, but how else are you going to hold somebody? How else are you going to hold somebody accountable for breaking a standard? Well, and that's and that's a conversational tone that. So here's here's the thing, right? So one of the things that I have always. When I was when I was an NCO, NCO was, was when, when our first shirt, shirt and our chief they did NCO, NCO calls. calls, and they and said, they "Hey, here's here's, here's how, how we understand it. it. We, we need to we need, need to hear from, from your level how, how you understand, understand it. it. These, These new, new changes, changes in the, the AFI. AFI how, do how do you understand, you understand it? it? And then and let's, let's come, come to a common ground so that we were all on the same page. So that way, it it can't it can't be everybody's going to get treated exactly the same because you're going to have some people that don't have a shaving waiver." And not, not every shaving waiver is implemented, implemented, implemented for the same, same reason either, either right? Right. 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 right? That way that the, standard the standard is still being held, held but it's fair. Right, right. right. And then and let's, let's make sure, sure as a unit that we're, that we're all on, on the same, same page. page. What, what ends, ends up happening, happening is, is that, that because, because those, those conversations, conversations are not happening at the lower level for accountability and for holding the discipline at that front supervisor level to meet a... Senior enlisted, enlisted leader, leader commander's, commander's intent, intent within the unit, unit it, gets it gets out of hand, hand and now we're at a place where you got, got MAGCOMs speaking on, a, on everyday a everyday standard, standard that should, should just be upheld, upheld at the lowest, lowest level. level. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's my, my opinion, opinion, right? right? So yeah. whether, whether, you know, whether, whether it is what it is or not, right? If it gets to the point of where it's out of hand and you got a base commander or a MAGCOM commander saying, hey, I'm going, I'm going everywhere, everywhere and I'm seeing this and it's and out of hand, hand because, because it's not being handled, handled at the lowest level. level. Then, then let's, let's get back, back to the lowest level, level actually feeling empowered and supported in having their conversation. For sure, sure, sure on the same place with what this is. Let's make sure everybody sees what one looks like, first of all, because we got we got some first shirts that have never even seen what the religious accommodation one looks like. So they're walking around a base going, I don't even know if that guy Oh yeah, no. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not arguing that. So we can't, if, if we're not educated, educated on, but we want to empower people, people to hold people to a standard that we're not even teaching them. Yeah. No, all, all good, good points. points. All, all good, good points, points, baby. The only, only thing I would, I would bring up with that is, I agree with you. I think we, we've, we've been talking about that for a long time. This starts. This began a long. I don't know when, but the feeling that. Young supervisors have the ability to do their job and enforce the standards with solid backing from their leadership. I don't know when that stopped or when that diminished, but that is part of the problem today. But I will say, 
And I applaud what ACC is doing because sometimes it takes someone to lean forward and say, this, this, this is wrong. Like we need to do something about it. And you know what? I'm not going to wait for big Air Force or corporation to do it. I'm going to set out and do it within the boundaries of what regulations, instructions, and, and powers that has been vested upon me. I'm going to do it. And then sometimes when people see it, it's just like that, uh, I think it was a video where you have one guy surrounded by people on the beach and he went out into the water and then nobody went out there. But once they saw him go out there, they went out on the beach with him. It's the same thing, because I would tell you, there is certain circles across the Air Force where people are like, you know what? There's some, there's something to what ACC is doing. So we're going to lean forward and do it too. And now, so back to the uh, shaving waiver piece. I think in the end, I do agree. I think the instruction needs to be more well written. And I will throw a curveball. I honestly think religious accommodations for beers has gotten out of hand too. And so here's the thing, like you're gonna tell me as a guy who has a shaving waiver, who has to keep my beard within a quarter of an inch and shave every, I don't know, two days to get it at a certain length. But as a religious accommodation, you don't. So I think Tony made a comment about ponytails, right? She's oh, right. Oh, it's honest. not ponytails. It was it's locks. Well, no, 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 no. It was something else about Paul. Somebody mentioned maybe it was Faith for Tony, but they mentioned something about ponytails. It's ponytails next. I'll be honest. Look, I'm all for ponytails. I think there's nothing wrong with that. We've shown that two points. We've shown that we can still be lethal with ponytails, right? It's not that big a deal. But point number one, if we're going to say that, can we say the same thing about beer? Does beer prevent us from being lethal? No. no. Number, Number two, two, can we agree that the issue with ponytails and causing migraines and headaches for, for ladies? I know from my perspective, when I came in in the early 90s, as I went through the ranks, I've never heard of that issue. As, but there was never a waiver that said ladies can wear a ponytail versus a bun. But for a man, you had to, you, you could get a shaving waiver. So I say that to say, when Chief Bass got in the office and she said, look, this is something good for the ladies. This is to help prevent them from having migraines. We've had some data that shows that it's caused migraines. We're going to allow ladies to wear ponytails. Went right across the board. It was like, all right, ponytail. And then there was some old folks grumbling like, oh, I can't, I can't believe they let ladies wear their hair down and the ponytail, blah, 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 blah. blah. We still was able to get our job done. So why can't it be the same said for, for shade? But I mean, for beard. Now, that was a rhetorical question. Anybody? <laughs> <can't> <laughs> if y'all agree or disagree. Go ahead, Faye. I'll, I'll let you go. I'll let you go ahead and say your comment. I'll, we'll let you go. Okay, okay, so so here's so here's, here's my thing at the end of the day, day right? So, so big, 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 big business, Air Force, any leader has learned that between deployment, deployment safety, safety, money, training, training and manning, manning, that any of those five areas, areas will get you fired. fired. If you don't, you don't know, know about your safety, safety, if you don't know about your money, those, those five areas, areas deployments, deployments or otherwise, they can get you. Where do where beards do fall into any of that? They've proven wholeheartedly. That, that it does, does not, not impede, impede the ability, ability to get a get lock, lock on a gas, gas mask. mask. They, they have, have proven wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly medically, medically that just as long as it is trimmed, and that's why it's the quarter of an inch on a shaving weaver, right? right? But, my but my thing, thing is, is, is you, you both have both played, played sports, sports right? right? Your, Your coach ever do the the exercise with you where like, like a, sprinting a sprinting exercise where, where you stand, stand and you, you let, let your body, your body fall, fall forward and you, and you don't, don't start running until your body, body naturally, your brain, brain catches, catches you. you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Your brain, brain catches, catches you to fall, fall forward. forward. Mm -hmm. There's, a, There's big a big difference between that and your and coach your standing behind the line and pushing you. Which one does your body actually learn how to naturally adjust to? And what kind of business... Are we, are we really, really looking, looking at being, at being if, if we're pushing, pushing things, things instead, instead of just, just naturally letting, letting it fall forward? I agree with that analogy. I, I think uh, running, with the, 
sprinting towards the finish line on something that doesn't even impact the big five. We're having more and more conversations about things that don't truly impact the big five, right? Yes, we need to get back to standards because standards impact all five. But where, where those standards, standards are, are truly supposed, supposed to be upheld is in educating and empowering that frontline frontline supervisor. So let's get there. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's get back, get back, to, back to that so that we, we can teach, teach our frontline frontline supervisors, supervisors how to, how to fall, fall forward and run, and run with, with it. it. Right? right? Instead, Instead of, of here, here, we got to keep, keep pushing, pushing people. Because when we lose people is when we lose people. That's why there's 18,000 comments of the fact that there's spelling. Somebody wants to pick up our thumb about it. Instead of just just understanding that we're we're trying trying to get get back back to where where we need to when it comes to standard to support support those those big five. five. That's all. all. I like we, pre- we appreciate you, Faye. We'll let you go. I'm going uh, ta- to say some stuff about your comments. We'll let you go. We really appreciate you coming on. As I, I can't do the hard thing. There you go. I don't know how to do the hard thing. Oh, you're doing really well. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, the dog. See you later. The dog. I like that. Oh, so let me get to a, a couple comments. Oh, I thought there was a couple comments that I, I just left. Oh, here they come. All right. Uh, Shannon Cat, what's up, Shannon Cat? In the building, Shannon. Hey, Chris. What's up, yeah. Shannon? Okay, so she had to come back uh, two weeks later, uh, then one one month later after seeing uh, if it still was his whatever clutch bar, whatever that is. Uh, she had convinced him already. They gave me a five year later. That's the bar. Uh, they definitely went back and forth on locks. Which, which upset, upset a lot, a lot of, females, of females, maybe, maybe back, back in 2010. And then let's see what Kat said. How, how we do, do the little things, things meet standards, is how we do everything. everything. So that's, that's been, been floating, floating around, around a lot lately. lately. Uh, how, how you do, do the small things, things is how you're going to do, do the big things. things. Uh, I, I, I guess there's agree and disagree to that. Back to faith point, or back to your point. Ah, man, it's tough. You said, you said that. Uh, put the up there. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anything comes from unpopular celebrities, it's, it's all unofficial. None of the conversations or comments from us as guests represent DOD or the armed forces as a whole. Uh, it's kind of tough, man, because uh, I agree. We're still going to get the job done, no matter what's on your face. And I say the same thing, like. If we're in a firefight, I'm not going to check to see if you have a waiver. But whatever people are saying, back to cash point, you should be doing the little things so that we ain't got to worry about that when it's go time. I'm agreeing and disagreeing at the same time, so talking out of both sides of my mouth. Yes, that's true, but when the big things come up, that little shit ain't going to matter no more. So how you do the little stuff doesn't really, in this situation, in this specific shaving, beards, ponytail situation, doesn't apply. I don't yeah, know if that makes sense. sense. Yeah, no, it does. I mean, I, I'm torn. I'm kind of caught in the middle, too, because I do think, I, I don't believe if you don't follow every standard that the mission's going to fail. There's a possibility, depending on the situation issue, but I think you said earlier, you know, when the missiles are, thro- bomb, the missiles are coming, and the bombs are going off. No one's going to be worried about if you're being within a quarter of inch. However, if if a st- if something's put out, you know, I I have a pet peeve. I feel like to some degree, when something is put out as a law, I feel like you should follow it. And if you don't want to follow it, and you have a legitimate reason. There's Avenues you can you can you can address or use to to address them. And so, and so one, one of the, of the issues, issues is they, they feel, feel like, like what I mean, they, some, some leadership feels there are people out not having, having a legitimate waiver and wearing a beard. beard. And, then and then some, some people, people say, say that's, that's a that's a, that's a lie, that's a cap, or whatever you want to say. <laughs> there aren't people out there doing it, but there are. It's no different than somebody wearing a a pair of boots that is that is you know questionable and they wear it anyway because nobody, nobody says, says anything. anything. But when, when somebody, somebody says, says something, something 
Then my favorite is, I've been, I've been doing, doing it all this long. long. My chief saw, my first sergeant saw, my commander saw. They didn't have an issue with it. But that don't make it right either. So I, I applaud what ACC is doing. I think the fact, and, and I think the fact that folks who have a shit waiver take it as if it's an assault on them is part of the problem. Like, if you have a legitimate waiver, and I get it, the AFI doesn't say you have to be clean shaven. But remember, and Faith said it earlier, your leadership can make a restriction more strict, not less strict. And again, I think I'm pretty sure and certain that ACC has conferred with their legal team and medical before oh, yeah. they get that oh. out. That's a, uh, you know what? That's a great point that people need to remember. Like, they're not just doing this in a vacuum. They're not just saying, like, uh, yippee ki and we're just going to make rules. Like, they're consulting with people to make sure it's legal, it's ethical, moral, like, and can be done. Uh, so that, that's a great point. Before you go attacking the messenger, just know they consulted with other people before that happened. Oh, look who's in the building. Shout out to Colonel Guest in the building. Oh, man. Yeah, please One read that. Goats. Yeah, read that because I can't read All right. That. Demonstrating, this is coming from Lieutenant Colonel Guest. Demonstrating compliance is the nonverbal of building trust. So there, there is something that the Army does. I think it's implied, oh, what's it called? Implied rules or implied tasks? Implied tasks. Basically, I ain't got to tell you every little simple thing that you got to do. You should know some for being in the military long enough, being around the world long enough, being a human long enough. I don't have to break down every little thing. It's interesting because in the forest, we ain't got that implied task. And if you don't break break down every little thing, then it's like, oh, you didn't tell me that. Uh, Let me go to one more comment. Can you read one more comment? Okay. Um, From Colonel Guest, do you think commanders should expect Clipper shaving a few times each week while on a shaving profile implicit tax? Yeah, and Army it also says, says Army equals, equals implicit and explicit tasks. Thoughts? No, I'll let you go. I just talk for a lot. Go ahead. No, no she was she was asking you. No, I, I, I thought she was just. <laughs> I, think that, I think that was me. I think that was asking you. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with she's saying. I I, I do. I, I think that the tricky thing is it's like it's a delicate dance, man. Like come on, sir. I know you thank you. I know it's like you know it's like it's like he's in the in the debate. Somebody asked a question that's controversial. He's like, oh yeah. Anyway. Calm down. So I don't wanna I really don't want to like belabor the point, but I think to wrap, to wrap it up, it up in a bowl. bowl. And we can we continue can talking about it if you guys want to in the comments. And again, and shout, shout out to anybody who wants to come and shout, shout out to Faith, Faith for coming on the show. If you want to come on the show, we make it easier for you. I think it's a great opportunity for, for you to showcase uh, your thoughts and opinions on whatever topic it may be. So anyway, quickly, so to put a bow on this, I think it's a delicate dance. There is always, it is always important to check the formation. Because you, when you think everything is going well, that's when something goes wrong. And even the smallest things that's not that important can brew into something large. And I would I won't I won't mention any names, but put it in perspective, I was told um, about a month ago that the Air Force, approximately five, eight years ago, had about five thousand waivers. Now they're up to thirty some plus thousand waivers. And, and shout out to the people out there who really need a shaving waiver. Like, like their faces, faces to, uh, I think it was uh, my brother Kincaid that said like a Nestle, Nestle Crunch bar. I feel you because I'm in the same joint. And I have people tell me like, hey, Chief, you should go get a shaving waiver. You can take the lead. We haven't seen any command chiefs with shaving waivers. We haven't seen any like 06s or generals with shaving waivers. I'm not going to get a shaving waiver to, to set a standard or to, to be a martyr. I'm not going to do that. I'll get I'll one because, because I feel I like I need, need one. one. I don't I need, need one. one. Is my, my face, face kind of jacked up at times? Yes, it is. But I know how to mitigate that. 
So me getting a shaving waiver, I'm going to get it for medical reasons, not because, you know, and, and I know I'm going to take some shots. Some people are like, oh, well, you're part of the problem because you know you're suffering. You didn't get a shaving waiver. Yo, it's no different than me getting a freaking, um, I hurt my knee on my ankle on the hike. Could I get a waiver? Yes. But what do you do? You walk it off. You see if you're okay. You go about your business, right? So for my shaving waiver, I've been in 31 years. I know, I know how to shave my face. <laughs> yes, 31 years. I know how to shave my face. I know how to take care of my face. And I don't choose to have a waiver. That's nothing against people who have waivers. But I do think the moment you assume everything is going well, that's when something's going wrong. I think that's what he says. I won't add anything more than that. Do, do your thing. That's what I say. Do your thing. <laughs> uh, uh, first, y'all first sergeants out there, man. Y'all get off. Y'all get off the front lines, man. Y'all y'all shouldn't be doing all the standards, man. Like y'all got other people in y'all formation, other mass sergeants, sergeants, mass sergeants, tech sergeants, and chiefs, or whatever. It doesn't always have to be first sergeants, man. Like, and you first sergeants with shaving waiver. Shout out to y'all too. Y'all. Y'all should be the example. If, if you're a first time with a shaving waiver, you've been able to have a professional appearance, I would really assume, and be able to educate people in your formation about having a, a professional appearance and a perception of folks with shaving waivers. So I'm telling you, much as we hate to admit it, there are people who are old school who are totally against shaving waivers. No, no different than they were against, against ponytails. Pony and you know why? Because there's a perception of people abusing the waiver and also because, you know, traditionalists, they see a professional, they don't want to see a beard. But we have proven for years you can have a shaving waiver and be professional. The problem is there's a small group of people, as it is for all standards and discipline issues, that are going and that are messing it up for other people. People wearing a beard without a shaving waiver. People growing their beard like they just crawled out of a tunnel or a dungeon or whatever. Those are the ones that's making it difficult for the shaving, shaving waiver movement. Maybe I shouldn't say movement. Anyway. Yep. Nah, it's all so good. Yeah, that's but yeah. The, we'll move on. Yeah. Hey, one, one more thing about the force and then we can move to something else. Did you see, I'm not sure if you do if, if you saw it or if it's coming out or if it's new. Um, for people getting promoted from E4 to E5, they're going to have an NCO induction ceremony. Oh, man. That would go. Really? I'm all for it. Like, I was talking to shout out to get the, oh, let me get her with my name right because she got me good too. Shout out to Gilda, uh, AKA G, a, a joint base San Antonio. Because I'm trying to work with her to figure that out here. Out of the three promotions, in the enlisted corps, the promotion of staff sergeant is the most important one. And it, it, it draws me up the wall for years how we have a senior NCO induction, a chief recognition ceremony, but we don't have one for staff sergeant. Don't we say like they're the most important one? Shay, I agree with that. All they get is ALS. Thank you. I agree. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm I don't remember comment. asking you a goddamn thing. I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Bill, first of all, send me your address because <laughs> we need to send you the book. Uh, I got a shaving waiver. I sh He's a shirt, too. I got a shaving waiver. I shave on Mondays and again on Fridays. Like, like, like you stated, stated, I know how to keep it check, in check and take care of my skin. I'm also an NCO instructor. Oh, I'm also for yeah, the NCO instructor. So, uh, Carl Guest says, yep, agree. And Bills, make sure you send me your address, bro. But, okay. <laughs> Do I agree? Sure. Why not? Hey, why not? My thing is, and this is what I always say, we can't just have something for a day and then there's no follow-up after. So my, so my thing, thing is, is what's, what's the, the are, we are we doing, doing this because it's a, a it's a, it's a big, big privilege to be able to be put into an NCO, NCO category, uh, and now you have our uh, non commissioned officer can give you you have basically more authorities uh, to give out. You have um, uh, I can't uh, orders that need to be followed and stuff like that. 
or are we just going to do this as a big ceremony, make money for the club, and then continue on with life as it exists now? I'm all for it if we're changing the mentality and the way that we look at NCOs, more or less like the Army and Navy and even Marine Corps. I'm not saying we need Lance Corporals and stuff like that, but that's what I'm saying. Uh, but you can say, hey, Shay, I agree. You can say the same thing for senior NCOs. Kind of. Kind of. I think senior NCOs is a different step, but kind of. Uh, we all heard the chief versus E9 argument. But that's my argument. Don't just do something for one day if you're not going to do something for, if it's not going to have a tradition behind it, which is another conversation in the Air Force. We lack tradition. But go ahead. Well, that goes, oh, I would like to talk about that one too. But anyway, and that goes back to what I said earlier. Like, it got to start somewhere. I agree. Like, our, I think we the, don't. Here's the thing: the tools are there to mentor and develop NCOs or Airmen Transition Staff. There are some tools there. The problem is, is the application afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So you can have. And I think what you're saying, and I agree. You can have an NCO induction ceremony, but what happens after that? I think the root cause of the problem. Is us. When I mean us, I'm talking about those who have more wisdom, knowledge, and experience and senior ranking than a senior airman and a staff sergeant. They are not getting the proper development as they should be getting. Some of them are, but a vast majority have not. And I think hopefully, one, we have to instill on the airmen transition and staff sergeant. That is the most important promotion they will ever have in the enlisted corps. And more importantly, being a supervisor will be the most challenging, most rewarding job they will ever have. They look at it as it's more money. They look at it as an additional stripe, more responsibility. But the same fanfare we give senior NCOs and then chiefs, I think it should be reversed. I think, I think if, if we could pay, pay there should be more invested, invested in, in, in uh, celebrating, celebrating the promotion of staff sergeant, sergeant then master, then chief. And I'm chief, don't get me wrong. Chief, top 1%, yada, yada, yada. yada. But I look at it like this. I, I was thinking about the analogy, right? You think about a defensive team, like a defensive football team, right? The defensive, what is the most important position on the defense? It's the linebacker. Stop the ball. No, the linebacker. Think, 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 think. To stop the advancement of the ball. What is the first, first front line of the defense? Defensive line. Exactly. So that's your area. Your ends are your staff sergeants. Because the staff sergeants, when the airmen can't get around, the staff sergeants go after the quarterback, right? And then on your cornerbacks are your tech sergeants. Your tech sergeants will help direct the staff sergeants. Your middle linebacker is your master sergeant. Now, I argue your secondary is your seniors, your defensive coordinators, your chiefs. So, me being off the field, I'm calling the plays. I need the senior NCOs to make sure they call the correct plays and the adjustments to the rest of the defense. But your airmen, if they feel like they're not getting supported by the middle linebackers, what are they going to do? Especially when they tire. You see when the defensive line gets tired, they're not really pushing the line. That's what you need the linebackers for. But I think. The NCOs and the airmen, they're not getting support they need. Good, good analogy with the first football thing. Shout out Chicks for being in the building. That's actually a really good analogy, uh, especially how you broke that down. That was actually really good. I'll give you two. Give me another one for that. That was good on that. Um, did you do that or somebody else came up with that? No. That was good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Say out your chest. It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> hey, uh, look, just said great analogy. Yeah, that was actually really good. I'm actually. I, I might do that on the speech. I should have that been really that last good. night, man. I like you better hitting the bomb uh, on the, the, the nail <laughs> chief. On the nail chief, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was actually, I'm actually like uberly impressed right now. That was actually made a lot of sense. You broke that down really good. You didn't go long-winded. That was actually really good. <laughs> Like, hey, wow. I don't remember asking, asking you a goddamn thing. I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. Look, 
about it. But that was actually really good, man. I'm, I'm impressed. But back to what your point is. Uh, it's You know what? We treat promotions almost like wing awards. And what I'll say about wing awards, I think those should be a bigger deal. Because you are the... It's almost like MVP. That's why I think about wing awards. MVP for base or excuse me for basketball or football, I'll just use those two. They always state you have four MVPs, five MVPs. Oh, the MVP of the league. Like look at Russell Westbrook. He will always be known as the MVP of the league, right? When going down his accolades. That's a like wing awards. You have won the MVP for that quarter. But we treat it like it's like you got a birthday, like it's a one-day birthday pass that you got. And for that's how we treat promotions as well. It's like a one-day birthday pass that you got. Congratulations, you made staff, you made senior, and it's just like, here you go. You put it on the next day, people might say, hey, what's up, Sergeant, a couple times, and then it's like, it's gone. Uh, so I think we need to put a little more ownership on when we do things like that. Uh, wing awards need to be bigger. Like You are the number one airman in the wing. That's how it's stated to me. In my football sports analogy, is you are the number one in the wing. Right, wrong, or different? Is there stuff involved that makes that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go through the political stuff and say is that's not a hundred percent right, but that's how I look at it. It needs to be celebrated. It needs to be celebrated. But we look at wing awards as just like a day I got to show up. Hopefully, it's at the end of the day so I can leave early. Then nobody cares about it no more. Well, yeah, that goes to the profession of arms, man, which I think has been solely lacking, too. I mean, I think back in the day. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me get that. Base and, uh, I, I, I'm good on both. But annuals, I get they should be bigger, which annuals are usually are. But, yeah, quarterlies, I get it, too. Just don't make the annual awards and uh, freaking Care Bear outfits and stuff like that, because that's when it gets crazy. Care uh, Bear outfits. You know how they do, like, a theme for these day of Wing Award crap. Gracie Robinson, Robinson says, couldn't agree more. I love the idea of the NCO induction. That step from the tactical level to being a supervisor is crucial, and it should be celebrated as such. 100. I agree. Now, yeah, I, yeah, we started that at Luke. Uh, I think they did it for the first time last year. I, do? I don't know. I wasn't there. I was on leave. So I don't no. exactly know how it happened, but it was supposed to be somewhat of a – they just matched the senior NCO one. And I think the other thing is you need to figure out how to pivot off there. That's another, two things I want to talk about before we get off the show is top three, five, six meetings and and the cultures about uh, uh, the Air Force. Those are two things I want to talk about. But I'll let you go because I went on a rant. Go ahead. I can't wait to see you get your topics in there. So just to huh? – I'm interested to see how quick real quick is. This is going to be great. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Okay. Let's see. It's 5714 mark. All right. Here we go. Okay. So first, real quick, for the annual awards, the problem is not the annual awards, it's the people. I remember when I was a young NCO, senior NCOs at uh, Yakota, Used to drag, I think it was, I can't remember the exact names. I want to say it was Todd and maybe Danny Davis. I know Killian Anderson was one of them. They used to drag us out of the office on Fridays to go to the annual awards or to a promotion. And it wouldn't even be anybody in our section. And they said, you need to go. And I was like, yo, ain't nobody in QC going in my section is getting promoted. Well, you you are an NCO. You need to go promote the airmen. You're not an NCO for security forces. You're an NCO for all airmen. Ooh. And that stuck, stuck with me because it's like when you, you think, think about, about it, it you know, the airman, airman comes up to you and say, Hey, hey sorry, peace, I need help. Hey, hey, don't talk to me. You're not part of my squadron. I'm going to refer you. You don't say that. So we should be celebrating all promotions, all awards. And I think part of the problem, too, is we're, we want our people to be the winners so bad. And we try, and try to, to find, find out, out if they, they won, won, and then we want to be the first to tell them if they win. Hey, yo, Pete, hey, man, I'm going to let you know, man, you didn't win, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then what then you going to say? Well, I don't, don't want to go because I didn't win. win. I don't want to go. And then your unifying, you want to go to people like, I ain't going because he ain't win. That's part of the problem. 
I tell, I tell people, people my formation, formation like, like, if you, you put somebody, somebody up from the ward or the ward, best, best believe you going. going. That's, that's part, part of the ticket. ticket. You, don't you don't get to pick and choose what you want. want. Just like just when like you get promoted. promoted. It's, it's, it's crazy, crazy you get promoted to master sergeant. You don't want to go to your induction ceremony? It should be mandatory. And it drives me crazy when supervisors are like, oh, she, I'm going to let you know. Uh, Sorry, so 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 he can't so say he can't go because uh, he got a fishing trip plan for the weekend. A fishing trip, <laughs> bro. Like you know how many people wish they were getting promoted and they didn't get promoted. I want to talk about the best dress piece because that'll take me forever. Anyway, I'm off the stage. That was only two minutes. <laughs> so my chief is texting me. She's killing me right now. I'm glad she's not in the comments, but. Uh, Dooley Allen's in the building and Loggins is in the building. Both Loggins is one of my shirts, so uh, big up to her on that uh, out there in Hill Air Force Base. Uh, the past couple of years, the release socials and induction ceremonies here have been lacking, in my opinion, but only eight people have been at the monthly meeting. Oh, so we're talking about, I guess we're transitioning to uh, lack of participation at private orgs. So. Hey, yo, so it's funny because there's three people talk about lack of participation at private orgs. I have a different idea about these private orgs. Oh, Lord, should we put the disclaimer back up there again? Hey, just before you start talking, y'all, remember, he's the first start in his day job. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. We gonna see. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. So look, let me go ahead and... All right, so... <laughs> Private orgs are important to go to, and I feel there should be a lot of participation. Number one is give me something to go to. If we're just going there and we're just reading the agenda that gets sent out, hey, does anybody have anything for the Focus 5 Six mentors? Yeah, I got some. Hey, I'm sorry, uh, McDonald. I went to the Focus 5 Six meeting. They talked about we need more people to show up, and they got a smoothie sale going on the weekends. All right, good. Have a seat. All right, anybody got anything for the uh, the uh, Air Force Ball Committee? Hey, I'm Sergeant uh, uh, Wendy's. I got, I'm got. i in charge of the Air Force Ball. We need y'all to come out. We're selling patches and stuff, but we need y'all to participate. Like, bro, I can see that in the agenda. Give me something to come. So my job, right, as the top three is to the airmen below me and big A airmen and the CGOs in front of me far as the pay grade i need to go ahead and mentor all of them so when i go to these private orgs i need to something to give back don't just give me dates and times because those are coming out on email anyway give me something to give back so i guess when you're running these things you got to think outside the box but everybody just wants to go through agendas i got a lot more to say but i'll pause well, the first thing is, um, you said need to mentor. It sh it should, it's, it's supposed to be should mentor. It's a big difference. It is your, you should feel a responsibility as a CRNCO, Master Sergeant, First Sergeant, to be like, I am going to deliberately mentor my airmen and my company grade officers. And if I say advice to my commander too, but anyway, now, I would say you have a big opportunity to fix that. I think most people who have issues with private orgs, they always look to say, why isn't a private org doing this? Why isn't a private org doesn't do that? Why are we listening to this and that? Remember, I mean, if you're a part of a private org, you can help change that. I mean, I think the most... I've, I've ever seen, seen that most, most private orgs, the really good ones, you get some out of, and when you have somebody who can stand up and just say, hey, look, we need to do this, and here's why, and I am going to take the lead on it. The problem is there's not a lot of people that's going to do that because of politics. So they're like, hey, I'm a new guy. I don't want to rub anybody the wrong way. I'm just going to wait, and I'm going to go for president. And then when they don't get president, they never come back. They never come back. They don't, they don't get elected. Get what do they do? They go back to their unit. They start their own top three. That's my favorite. You can't get elected. So I'm just going to start my own top three in my unit. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, people have ulterior motives. I want to get to a, a couple questions. Uh, so this may have been, uh, this may have to involve a greater question. Greater question? Okay. What purpose, what's the purpose having our private orgs truly been serving? Good question. Have they been used as social clubs or something more? Man, hold on. We got a lot of comments. So we'll stay on that. Uh, uh, Shay, if you can get in, we'll get you in. Uh, too many people at our level do it for the look, yeah, and not the development. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Uh, shout out Holloway in the building. It's always the same five people and people who, and then people who complain. Okay, I feel like the complainer. And I'm in the complainer section right now. So. Let's get back to Robinson's point. Let's get back to Robinson's point. So he said, we'll answer the first question first. What purpose have our private orgs truly been serving? That might be a personal thing. I don't know what purpose your private, but a lot of private orgs are looking at donation, like donation booths. The most I remember from meetings is people coming there and say, hey, can we borrow 300 bucks for our bake sale that we're doing? Hey, uh, we have the NCO uh, promotion ceremony. Can we borrow 500 bucks? Hey, the Air Force ball is, ball is coming up. We would like to ask for 100 bucks from the top three. Like, that's all I remember. Doing. And then the top three saying we're broke because nobody pays their dues. But everybody comes asking for money. And then it's like, hey, we need to do volunteer bits. But nobody wants to lead the volunteer bits because they know they're not going to get any help. From anybody to come volunteer. So back to your point, I'll let you go, uh, Philly. Is what point? What's the purpose of private orgs truly been served? What What's their purpose? And we have a lot more things. Go ahead. Well, I just want to remind folks, and I'm sure you guys know, but I'll say it again. You know, private orgs is in the Brown Book. It's in the Oh my God! Book. I, I, I don't have the right button. I'll just wait. Man, shut up. Not good enough. Hey, look. Hey, it is what it is. I'm just telling you how it is, bro. Like, it's in the brown book. But anyway, so your private orgs is as good as you make it to be. The problem is, is people go, and I think they've said it earlier, they go for the wrong reasons. It is not a place for you to go to. If you're thinking of getting pro um, promoted, you shouldn't go. Because you're part of the problem. And I'll, I'll throw shade, shade at myself. myself. I deserve uh, uh, many gunshots, gunshots for this one. I give it to myself right now. Here I am in my position. I haven't been to one meeting since I've been on JBSA, partly because I travel a lot. But though, the whole point is when you go to those meetings, you're supposed to be developed. You're supposed to be involved in things that's going to make you better. And it's a great opportunity for you to learn folks outside of your own AFSC. That's what it's supposed to be for. There was a couple of posts on the Air NCO page about folks getting promoted and they paid like landing fees. When I was at DM, I said, you know, promoters don't pay landing fees. That's what a private org is for. When someone gets promoted to NCO, those promoters all should be given at least, if not a coin, and they should get an automatic membership at least for half a year, two to five, six, and they shouldn't pay no landing fees. If that means you're not going to get free drinks at the bar, or you're not going to get the best cake at HEB, so be it. If you're going to get hostess cake, so what? But you should not have to worry about paying landing fees for your own promotion. That's what the private org is for. That's like saying, like, look, hey, Airmen, welcome to the NCO Corps. And to show our appreciation, we're going to do this social party for you, and you don't have to pay a dime. And we're going to give you a souvenir and welcome you to the 5 6. There are many folks who are treated that way, and they say, you know what? I never thought the 5 6 is like this. I'm glad I'm joining. And then they want to pay it back to others who get promoted the next year. The right, problem right. is, there's a lot of jockeying, figuring out right. who's going to be the POC or the president or my favorite. Oh, if you lead the annual awards, you are going to be our number one threat. It shouldn't come down to that. I want the person who is most invested on making an event happen, not the one who deserves the stratification. Good point. Uh, one more time. 
Jasmine. Jasmine and Dante in the building. Hey, shout out to your husband for making masters. Tell myself what's up. I know he ain't a Facebook user, so tell myself what's up. We'll get to all these comments because they're flying in. We'll try to be quicker with answering stuff so we can get to these things as well. Uh, as top three, it was fulfilling to go around providing meals to FS. Why I got be FSS? And uh, CP and doing and doing gas giveaways to my junior enlisted. Okay, appreciate that. Uh, senior leaders affect PO memberships. What's PO? Private, private orgs. Oh, private inventory. Okay, they have senior enlisted mentors who diminish the effect. Oh, a hundred percent. Why can't they be a social club? Sometimes people need to vent. And I, oh no, I agree. It should. Yeah, he's absolutely right. Some of your private orgs should be part of that venting session. Like this is the BS that we're seeing. Maybe talk about beards at your private org and how you guys are tackling that in the organization. Those are what I think top three meet or top three focus five, six. Those would should not to always fix something, but let's just talk about it. Hey, LRS, what are y'all doing? Hey, command post, what do you see? Hey, FSS, what do you see? Hey, security for Hey, maintenance, what do you see? And I don't need a 20 minutes soliloquy about what you're doing. Just give me something real quick and let's move on. But people do get long winded. God forbid you get somebody a stage. I mean, we do it on this show all the time. Um, you're about to hear interventions, but since COVID, people have been realizing that the meetings and opportunities can be found all over, not just at the private orgs. But this is, man, I hate to agree with Chief on this. This goes back to the Brown Book. You should be involved in your private orgs, not everybody else's private orgs. I mean, you can do both. Uh, they say leaders lead by example. So I agree, Shay. That's why I'm throwing shots at myself. I have not been in one yet. Private orgs should fulfill a need of the basic. They don't, absolutely. I used to tell private orgs, man, like a DM. I used to meet, and that's the key. Oh, I'm sorry. Samel Brown, private orgs. Uh -huh. This is the last one. That's why I say read this and then Samel go Samel Brown, private orgs are a conduit, a belly button for target issues and events. Oh, I like that. If used effectively, they are very helpful and provide a platform to cross-functional development, communication, et cetera, et cetera. Man, you, hey, you got you on point, Samel. Oh, thank you, brother. So when I was at DM, part of the problem is the command chief, if they don't invest in the private orgs, then they're not going to get any support. I used to meet with the private orgs every month. And is it, is it takes a lot of time? Yes. But when they would say, hey, we don't have enough people going, Best believe I'm at the private org or I'm talking to the senior enlisted leaders and I'm telling them like, yo, they don't have anybody there. If you're pitching somebody to me that they are a leader on base and they're not at least going, I'm going to have some questions. And I'm not saying they don't deserve to be a stratification or not a leader, but being a great leader in your organization is great. It's even better when you're out there and about. I throw one more quick shout out. Tony Bostic is a perfect example. I used, I used to tell, tell people, people the key, key, you know you're ready, ready to be a chief. chief. When airmen, airmen know, who know who you are, or, or just, just people in general know who you are, are and they're not part of your squad. squad. There, there were people in Kadena that were in CE and maintenance. maintenance. They, they would throw Tony Bossing name out like he was in their squad. You know why? Because he was active and out and about. That is the key to a great senior NCO when they're out there moving about, just like chiefs. Because you think about a chief, a chief is supposed to be had their ear to the ground for everybody, not just their organization. Charles Davis says previously it has been some discussion about chiefs not being as involved in the top three, considering they are in the top three. What are your opinions about that? Charles Davis, you're right, and I'm going to correct it. First thing Monday morning. I'm going to find out when, when, the next, when the next top three, three meeting is on JBSA, JBSA guaranteed I will be there. there. I may I not may make the Chiefs group one, one and, and it's nothing not against the Chiefs group. group. I'm, I'm more concerned about the top three, three and the five, six. six. I, will I will be there. And even, even the first, first four, four, if they have it on JBSA or the Airman's Council. That's where we need to be. Chiefs in the room, we're going to just sit there, cuss and discuss, complain, blah, blah, blah. I need, I need to be, to be have, have my, my ear, ear on the street. street. So, so that, that way, when, when I hear it, it and especially if there's rumors, rumors I can I better explain, explain it so they can maybe, you know, get some buy-in or, or I, can I can attack, attack the issues because I have, I have a lot, lot, you know, a lot more pull. So that's what we need to be at. Thank you. 
Yeah, definitely. And we'll see if you make that meeting. Uh, uh, so, Mel, I'm going to get to your, your comment, and I'm going to roast you when I get there. Uh, not only just beers, but bringing in the EFMP uh, reps to help with knowledge gaps or AFSC reps to talk about finances. Uh, AFRC reps to talk about finances. Private organizations such as the 5-6 should add value to the NCOs to make shirts job easier. I appreciate that. Are you laughing at Samel's joint? No, not just that, what you said, but now I'm laughing at Samel's joint. <laughs> hey, you've been struggling reading them comments. Let DC read them joints. <laughs> you need a teleprompter or something. Come on. First of all, uh, Samel, uh, hold on. I'm scared of you motherfuckers. <laughs> Calm down. Look, reading is not my strong point. But the only way to get better is practice. So I'm trying to practice. During my practice, y'all get to see it and hear it and hear me struggle. So just be alone for the struggle bus ride and just be happy to be a part of it. Yo, that's what that's what I need. The comments are small. And, and you see Philly is close to his screen. I'm pretty far back from my screen. So the comments are small. Thank you, Shay. Thank you. I appreciate that. So butterfly in the sky. Go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. Oh, that was a joint. Yeah, that was a joint. <laughs> Yo, hey, my reading comprehension almost didn't give me an Air Force. You ain't lying. <laughs> hey, that's fine. We all have our struggles. We all have things that we ain't good at. All right, let's let's get back to the topic then. Right, oh, so. hell no. Wait, wait till Samel for it. you like 80 years old. Practice, <laughs> practice, not game practice. <laughs> I got to be 80. That's crazy. Oh, 80 is crazy. But, but here's the thing. Private orgs, and we'll say this and we'll get off, get off the subject. Uh, private orgs need to be something that you want me to come to. If you want me to pay my money, if you want me to pay dues, if you want me to show up every week, if you're mad at participation, give me something to come to. And I'll be honest, like if this show sucked, y'all wouldn't show up. So give me something to come to. Give me a reason why you want me there. Give me a nugget or something to take back instead of somebody coming up there and telling me what new uh, car wash is going on in the month of September. Like, I don't know what POW MIA run is going to be happening. Like, that's really all we talk about. Like, you got to give me something else, some reason why to come there. Yeah, we're going to make it worthwhile. Thank you. Make the shit worth something. And then don't show up to Focus 5-6 meeting as a top three mentor and think because you just got a rooftop, people are going to respect what the fuck you talking about. You got to have something to say. Sorry. Sorry. I missed that part. I got on my rant. That, just like I can't read well, some people are not good public speakers. Sit the f- All right, go ahead. You know, sometimes it doesn't take someone to be a, be a great, great public, public speaker, speaker and a private or to make an impact. Sometimes, Sometimes just, just having them there means something. something. Like, like I always, I always try, try to get my wing commander to go to them because it's, it's great, great for the, the wing commander to see what their senior NCOs, NCOs or airmen and NCOs, NCOs are talking about. But more importantly, it's a touch point for the troops and for the wing commander. So he can see firsthand who's the one out there working issues. I always tell, the top, the top three, three like, like, you know, we, we had, had like at DM, DM we had a had problem, problem with um, with airmen having issues, issues getting a car, car or like, like uh, trying to get, get like, we try to get scooters on base. And I was, was telling the top three, three like, yo, that's, that's what y'all should be talking about. Like if the wing commander said he's going to fund it, but he doesn't know if anybody wants it, why don't y'all talk about it? And then when y'all come back next month, I'm going to ask you guys about it. They had problems with washing machines in the dorms. They said the washing machines in the dorm or the dryers in the dorms wasn't working. There was a story of an airman that put a, a sock. What was it? They put a sock in a dryer or something. Oh, no, it was in a, something in the dryer. But anyway, the sock was jacked up. Well, I can't remember what was wrong. But it was something wrong with the washer and dryer. And I was like, y'all should be talking about that. Think of the proper a movement. It is a movement where people come together and they, and they fix, fix problems. problems. 
Because, like, like, when you when say, you when say, people say private dogs are useless, why do people sign up for AFSA? Why do people sign up for Toastmasters? You know why? Because it's like there's usefulness in it. But you're only going to have something useful out of it. You got to contribute to it. You've got to contribute. Yeah. I think that's the whole thing. People just want shit given to them, but you're right. You do have to contribute. I'm sitting here being the complaint. I'm not running for top three president or anything, but I just feel like if you are going to run, you better be bringing something to the table. It's like on no difference than on a smaller scale, the president of the United States, like you should have things that you're bringing to the table. You shouldn't just show up like, hey, I want to be the president. Like, I would appreciate somebody showing up and saying, I wouldn't vote for you. But I want to be president because I'm trying to make next rank. I'm trying to make senior. So that's why, I, hey, I'm trying to make chief. So I'm going to be the president of the top three. I'm not going to contribute a whole lot. I'm going to rely on y'all to do everything. And I just want to make chief. So I'm going to take all the credit for doing everything that gets done. And I'm not going to have any good ideas. And I'm just going to hold meetings because it's part of our... Um, our agreement, our bylaws that we have to do monthly meetings to be a nonprofit organization. So that's why we do them. Like, I would appreciate that shit. I really would. Because I hate when I hear all this, we're going to do great things. I'm going to change the attendance. I'm going to get more people here. I'm going to make sure I'm here. I'm going to make sure we do events and everybody's going to know about top three. Man, uh, 60 days later, <laughs> ain't nothing happened. Ain't nothing happened that you talk about. Uh, best, best thing I learned, learned that everyone, everyone wants, wants to eat. eat. Not everyone, everyone wants, wants to put their to fork in and own and their, own, and their own hand, hand though. though. So, so teach them may be harder, but it's, but it's necessary. necessary. I, agree. I agree. I agree. Everybody want to eat. eat. All right, uh, I'm, done I'm done with that topic. topic. You done? I think I you brought us some good points. You did say you did say you're going to the next top three meeting. Oh yeah, I'm going. As soon as I find one, the next one is I'm going. Okay. okay. I'm going. Uh, I'm going. I just, I, I just, I thought about it when I was doing my speech. And somebody asked about top three, and I was like, you know, I haven't been to any of them. And I know you I know, travel a lot. You should go to the next. You, you should go to the shirt meeting too, and just tell them that you appreciate what they do. I do that all the time. I love shirts, man. I love shirts. What last shirt? What last shirt? You know what? You know what? Last shirt. Hey, Faith, thanks for sending me a bike. I definitely want to go. But, but I love shirts. You know, some of y'all some prima donnas, man. Like, y'all need to get out y'all feelings. Like, first charges are important, but y'all need to let go some of y'all ability to do y'all job and let other people do it. Make them do their job. Not all first sergeants. Some first sergeants get that. But let people do their job, man. Is that I want you to go to visit. Well, you're part of the problem. When you're a first sergeant. Yo, let somebody me? else do their job, man. Yo, is that a shot of me? I mean, you're part of the problem. You were first like starting, right? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just what, I, what I told you about the DTS stuff. You are part of the problem. Yes, you. <laughs> okay. All right. I thought that was a dig at me, but I'm glad it was the overall thing. No, it was it was a it was the overall. I mean to put I mean it's you are the problem part of it, you know. But anyway, I think that uh I think that's part of the reason why First sergeant, first sergeant, the last, last sergeant. sergeant. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, like, I mean, like, think about it. Like, you're a diamond. The same, you got some extra training that most CNCOs don't get. What training? But I can still do my job just as good as you. I just don't have all the, 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 the additional training and knowledge. But I think when we allow... First, First sergeants to tackle, to tackle everything. everything. One, y'all get, get burned out. out. Yeah. Two, it, it, it relieves senior NCOs their responsibility, responsibility to do some, some of the stuff that y'all doing. doing. They concentrate on promotion. promotion. And then the and first, first sergeants turn up like, oh, I can't get promoted. You know, my EPR has this stuff and it's not operational. Bro, you know, first sergeants is really supposed to be going out in formations, educating them too about operational stuff to some degree. First stars are more than, more than just, just, you know, morale you know, hugs and, and, and cupcakes and lollipops and, and taking them to legal appointments and advising the commander in chief. The first stars is an operational leader, too. It's just their responsibilities extend a little bit more beyond that. 
And I think for the mass art, see mass art, they're like, oh, I'll just give it to the shirt. Let's show him. I mean, that's true. I ain't gonna say you're lying about that. Uh, what you what curveball you wanted to throw? I was gonna ask you about the election, man. Like, what's up with the election, bro? Are you convinced of who you're gonna vote for? I know a previous show, you said you don't want to vote at all. First of all, it's not. Let me go ahead. Uh, Here we go, though. It's not that I don't want to vote. I'm not going to vote. Uh, Let's see. I'm okay. Not gonna all right. So I think it's interesting. I saw there was a post by who was it? Oh, Killer Mike. You know, Killer oh, Mike. Yeah, Killer Mike. Yeah, I love Killer Grammy Mike. Grammy Award winning Killer Mike had a great album, but he said something interesting. He said, just because you're black, you're not going to get my vote. Ooh. And I thought to myself, hmm, that's pretty provocative statement. But in a way, it's true. Like, I wonder people assume. B, are, are you serious? <laughs> hey, hey Samel, he's been saying that the past couple, couple of shows. At least it's consistent. When it comes Samel, to you. I'm not I'm joking. joking. I'm not I'm voting. Let me, let me, let me echo me this. I'm not voting ever for the president of the United States. Wow. I can go into why. I don't mind going into why. Uh, bro, bro, give me that. Yeah. I want, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Yo, yo I, mean, I mean, somebody, somebody is, is gonna, gonna really, really have, have to tell, tell me why, why voting, voting matters. matters. <laughs> oh, here we go. Why not? Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'll be quick this time. When voting for the president, your vote doesn't matter. It's about, it's not the popularity vote that matters. It is the electoral college that matters who the president is. So whatever states they take, they got to take so many states that have so many electorals in it to be the president, right? So if your state is Democrat, you're not, You're not changing, changing it to Republic, Republic because of your one vote. vote. You're, You're going to gonna have, have to show, show me somewhere that, that the race, race for the, the state, state to be Democrat or Republican, or Republican was decided by, by I'll, I'll even say, say 10, 10 or less votes. votes. It's usually by hundreds of thousands of votes. votes. Now, now, everybody, everybody say, say, you're part of the problem because it only starts with one. I'll give you that. Hey, I'll be part of that problem. But, but I just, I just don't, don't think, think it matters. matters. I'm, I'm not, not swaying or changing, changing anything. anything. And, and I don't, don't want to put my... my... <laughs> he said, well, well tell, tell me high level things. I agree. If that's, that's low level, level what, 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 what part am I missing? Am I missing? Somebody, Somebody tell, tell me. me. And I'm, I'm, I'm a big, big boy. boy. I can I handle it. it. You can you tell me. I ain't going to hurt my feelings. almost, and maybe somebody can help me out, but it almost gives me the impression you're saying that your vote is it's so, so small, small on the, on the grand, grand scale, scale of things that it has no, no meaning, meaning and there's no there's way of no knowing. Way. But then, if that was, is that, is that correct, correct or, or close or no? Close. Keep going. Close. Keep going. Okay. okay. So, so that's, that's almost, almost implying so that one person, person cannot affect, affect an election. An election. And, and even if even if you still feel that's, that's the case, case, then it's like, what would you say if the government said you can't vote at all? I don't, I don't care. Did you care? I don't care. No. no. Okay. Long, everybody, everybody feel wait, free. Wait, 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 wait. Let me clarify. Everybody in the comments feel free to jump on and attack Pete. And three, two, one, go. I'm going to rewind what I say. I'm going to rewind what I say. What I will say is for the president of the United States, it does. Congress. That's, that's a big, a big deal. deal. Propositions, that's, that's a big deal. deal. Uh, your, your local, local state, state governors, governors, and that's, that's how you, you oh, I'm sorry, that's, that's how you affect the president vote is by how you elect your governors and things like that in the state because that holds a house in the Senate and blah, 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 blah. I mean, I don't want to go down the political role, but somebody's going to have to prove me wrong because so far I'm not proved wrong. Okay. If voting doesn't matter, then why are there? Why are they suppressing the vote? Are we disregarding the people who fought and died to vote? Good point. I agree. 
I might, I might be. be. And if, if, if you, you want to say, Pete, Pete, that's how you're coming across, across then that's, that's fine. fine. I'll take that. that. Like, like, but that's, that's really your opinion. opinion. And, 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 and I'll respect, respect to you, Charles. Charles. That's really your opinion your behind why, why I don't, don't want to vote. Because you could swing that pitch whichever way you want. I'm trying to throw it this way. And you were like, well, look over here because now you're disrespecting all the people who died for your chance to vote. Sure. Sure, sure, probably. probably. But, but the, the when you can make my point, point that my that, that Pete's, Pete's vote is going to sway anything, anything that has to do with the state of Arizona, or I'm a, a Texas, Texas resident. resident. So, so the, the state, state of Texas, Texas how, how they, they vote. vote. Hold on, <laughs> Todd Simmons in the building. Shout out to you. Uh, Go ahead. No, and somebody. Tired, oh, tired, oh man, tired, he gonna tired, roast, 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 roast. roast, roast. <laughs> I, I ain't ready to hear all that. All right. Uh, now your opinion is okay. Not come. Oh, now your opinion is okay. Now your opinion is okay. Not coming at you. P, you're voting this year, but not just for president. Correct. Correct. Uh, Pete, I'll call you later. All right, Chief. Uh, the electoral college is a humble system to determine. Oh, well. What were the cons of a popular vote? The, okay, the reason, if you, I guess, uh, I missed it. Do you, your vote? Lo- yeah, yeah. I vote for local officials. I do do that. I do do that. Uh, what would the cons be of the popularity vote? I want to say it's almost almost like like when when top top three comes out out for vote for president, president, all of a sudden there's 20 20 people from that that person's squadron that shows up to vote for that person person that has never showed showed up up before. before. That would be the con of it. The only con of it. They don't care what you are. They don't care who, what you got to say. They don't care anything about it. Like you're my boy and I'm voting for you. That's pretty much it. Back to killer Mike's point, which he said, he said, I'm, I'm not, not voting, voting for you just because you're, you're black. black. Bro, your, your vote, vote don't matter. matter. So, so do whatever, whatever you want to do. do. I'm done. done. You, somebody's going to have to prove me wrong. Again, the, the floodgates are open, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me, let me provide a counterpoint. You said you don't vote for big elections, but you vote local, right? Hold on. Local policies actually have more direct impact on your... I agree. I agree. Oh, shit. He hit me with the butt. <laughs> okay, I can accept that because I see both sides. Local and state elections, in my opinion, hold more weight. Okay, hold on. Todd's going to hit us with the butt, but go ahead. Go ahead, Chief. I lost my train of thought. The state, I mean, you, why would you think your vote matters for local politics and not for the grand scheme thing? Because local is just your local voting, so the numbers are a lot smaller. So therefore, so how would that, you? How that, would you know that, that, that takes vote to so kind of like what uh, whoever said about the popularity vote. That's kind of what your local laws are. Is whatever the masses say, right? So if you say Prop One Zero Zero, fifty one percent of the people want it, fifty percent of the people don't want it, then it's going to go to fifty one percent. With the President of the United States. All it is is, is the, the electoral, electoral college. college. That's, That's it. it. I, it's, it's funny. funny. Oh, so I, think, I think I think Ty said it perfectly right, right there. Wait, I missed, I missed it. it. Federal elections, Federal elections, can, drive elections can drive generational impact. impact. There you Agreed. have it. Right That's a mic That's drop. drop. It doesn't. That's a, That's not a mic drop. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. And, what you so, said it doesn't draw no. generational impact? No, no, no. Federal elections can draw yeah. generation, but I cannot impact the federal election is what I'm saying. So it's almost like you're trying to say because the federal election is so so grand, so large, so many people that's voting, you have no way of knowing that their vote's going to count. No, you're not no. saying that. I'm saying if I want to change something, I'm in a a Texas Texas resident. resident. Say it's just Democrat Democrat this year. My My Republican Republican vote, if that's the way I would go, does not change that. that. Therefore, almost like my vote don't count. So you don't uh, think that your 
your your election for your president doesn't impact what's going to happen in Texas? Oh yeah, it does. It does. It does. So yes. why, that's why I'm confused. Like my, that's why vote, it's just my, as impactful. My, my so when the when the when they had the D, DNC. And the president, or excuse me, the governor of uh, Texas got out there and says, we are going for Kamala Harris, or what, I don't even know if that was the case. Then, that's what Texas is doing. What? That's what, te- that's what, so the Texas governor basically says, we're a democratic state. We're endorsing Kamala Harris. Okay. But that's now, just the democratic, democratic portion of Texas. Right, 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 right. 100%, 100%. 100%. If that state is 51% Democrat, 49% of Republican, then we're not changing anything. Hold on. I, a lot of good comments. It's a, okay, last thing, Pete. You said that someone is going to have to convince you, but have you done the digging yourself on why... Per- why the president is important, why the vote for president is important. Uh, I think his example would fail, into, will fall into, yeah, 2016 elections. Uh, Pete want to be convinced he's, <laughs> he is saving the why. All right, bro. Uh, last presidential was decided by 40,000 inch votes total in three states. Yep, literally turned out impactful outcome. Right. At, Todd, I agree, agree 40,000. Show me where it's 10. Bro, like, like you're, you're not, not going to get that. that. That's the thing. It's you not about vote. one vote. It's the collection of voters, principle of the... I get it. I get it. So if... Okay, here's some help to your argument. To your argument. If 40 people... If you have 50 people in a race and 40 people are going left and 10 people are going right... Your 10 don't matter. Your 10 don't matter at all. You know what? Here's my thing. The better is low. Here's my thing. Do you ever, do you ever complain? Do you ever complain about the, the status or the current state of the United States? You lie. If you'll never complain about taxes, you'll never complain about inflation. You'll never care to complain about the border. You'll never complain about the military not getting paid enough. If you say you don't, you lie. You lie. Do Come I, on, don't wait, play. Wait, 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 wait. Do I complain about it? Yes. Do I think uh, if I would have voted and a different president would have got in and things would change? That's my, I guess the point I'm trying to make is, and what most people say. <laughs> Ty, you know, are you like one of those diamond members, Todd? You getting the, the Audi? Oh, yeah, yeah. You getting the four chart? Uh, Ten thousand people in Georgia, bro. You're uh, you're one always, man. So my point I'm trying to make is, when you complain, they always say vote. There is no way, no one can tell me that they can say my one vote. Calls this president to win. You will never know that. Correct. Because they don't go, even at the local election, they're not going to break it down. Okay, they in the council, vote for Democrat. Peterson, vote for Democrat. Oh, Peterson, you're the last vote. You win. You're not going to know that. I agree. So for me, in their theory, that's not a solid reason not to vote. Do the island put up a link? The power of the vote. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, I will put this up. I will, yeah. yeah. Well, it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's not Is too it long. long. No, it's not no, too long. long. All right. Let me go ahead and bing, 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 bing. All right. Power to vote. Thomas Jefferson was le- Okay. No, this is kind of long. I'll read this later. <laughs> I'll read this later. This is kind of long. It stops in 2010. That was... Uh, 14, 14 years. Ago. Perhaps you can give us a quick one sentence. It just, it just, this. yeah, it just says basically in every two years or every year, uh, something was decided. So, Stockton, California, the Stockton Unified School Trustee Arena number three or area number three set was won by one vote. 
uh, reached 2,302 votes. Yeah, that's a local election. I agree with that. I'm talking about just the president. You almost making my argument for me, which I appreciate that. But I'm just talking about the president. This is local election stuff. Uh, the Senate passed. I get that. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was elected president by one vote. That was goddamn 1800s. It was probably a 20 billion less people in the 1800s than are now. But I appreciate it. You're making my point. Uh, I like to see statistics. How many eligible voters nation? So what that tells me, I'm just the one that says it. There are a lot of people who don't vote who say they vote. Or a lot of people that are eligible to vote who don't vote. I'm just the one that says, I'm not voting. That's just me. Uh, your one vote counts. I agree. I agree for a local election. I agree. I agree. Uh, great discussion, everyone. Appreciate it. You don't care. You can vote for any of them. Don't vote for any of them. No, 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 no. Because again, again, because again, your argument, from my point of view, if you're saying you shouldn't vote for the presidential election because you have no way of having someone telling you that your vote counts or not, you can say the same for the local. You will never know if your vote counted in a local election. My vote does. Wait, no. Here's the thing. And this is where you're missing. In a local election, it counts. They are counting one vote. Uh, proposition four, yes. Here's one vote. No, here's no one. Yes, here's 10 votes. I think what you're missing is even them doing that, they're not going to announce who voted. I don't care about my... When you hit that button, that's it. It's in voting line. Right. I don't care about my name being announced. Like, like you said, Pete voted here, Philly. I don't care about that. For the presidential, it doesn't matter if... You vote Democrat if your state is Republican. As far as who gets the vote, this it's not, and that's why they have the popularity vote on the screen. When you guys see the uh, the voting in November, you'll see the popularity vote, and then you'll see the electoral college. Your state might have had a hundred thousand people. If there's a hundred thousand people in the vote in the uh, state. 40,000 might have voted for Republican, 60,000 voted for Tim Democrat. If that state holds more electoral colleges than a smaller state, that state wins. Whereas, say you're in a state like a small state like Wyoming or something, uh, say every single person that votes in that state voted Democrat, right? That's fine. Say, I don't know, a million people voted Democrat. The popularity vote would add that million people. But for the electoral college, what gets people in the president, they might only get one vote. Whereas a state like California, New York, Philadelphia, something like that, uh, or Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, they might have more electoral colleges. Those might be separated by 100,000 or whatever, whatever, but it doesn't matter. Where you vote it, it's whatever your state does. All right, I'm kind of done with this thing because I'm talking about the same thing over and over. Uh, you are educated in power, Pete. Electoral, uh, electoral votes are awarded on the basis of the popular vote. I, You're 100% right. I'm not saying you're wrong on that. But I'm saying if your state doesn't hold a lot of electoral votes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I get that it's off the popularity vote uh, for each state. I get that. Where did you go to high school? You missed some. Hey, I really did. California education system. <laughs> Listen here, little gripper. You're going to turn around and bend over for Daddy Gojo, and you're going to make those weird noises for me, all right? Not good enough. I'm that was crazy. crazy. That, was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. That was crazy. But that's just my personal opinion. First of all, you're not going to speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. So I get it. I get what you guys are saying. And you know what? More power to you. Like, I hope you guys go out there, go get the voting board, go get your little sticker that says, I voted. Like, I'll be happy for it. I'll even put a like on your Facebook. Like, 
I'm, I'm not, not against, against it. it. I'm, I'm not, not trying, trying to, to sit, tell everybody my, my way, way of thinking is the best way. way. Just, just like, like I don't think y'all saying, saying, saying that your way of thinking is the best way. I hope not. But that's just my opinion. And somebody, I hear what you guys are saying. I really do. I just don't. You live in this Arizona, your vote counts for your city. So take your ass to vote. He must be getting mad because he started to cuss. He must be getting really upset. Uh, anyway, qu- anyway, go ahead. I, 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 this, is your, this is your fault. This is your fault because you brought this up. This is your fault. Hey, my fault. You, 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 you're misunderstood. Your thoughts about the voting is misunderstood or misguided. But back to the original question. Someone in the comments, are you, who in the comments are Democrat? No, don't, no, don't do that, because yeah, I know some people say about it. Yeah. Let's put it this way. Are you convinced if you are, are you convinced who you're going to vote for? And if you care to share who and why? So I'll share. Um, I think I mentioned this before. I'm kind of in the middle. And, you know, shout out to Wendy, my bride, man. She's a... She's big Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris fan, um, AKA member, you know, hey, I'm all for that, you know what I mean? But the way I look at it is I agree with Killer Mike. You're not gonna just get my vote because you're African-American. You're not, like, I gotta be able to believe in your platform, but I will give her credit. Outside of her and President, former President Trump, he is the only one who has put something out about how she's gonna get something done. Not, not saying, saying it's perfect, perfect, but at least it's something. something. And, and I will tell you, like, I, you know, I'm in this class, you know, for my social work degree, and they were talking about, like, critical race theory, and we're talking about a lot of DNI initiatives. And I honestly think if, and maybe somebody tell me if I'm wrong, but I think if former President Trump gets elected, a lot of that stuff's going to get rescinded. I remember when he was in the office when he started, he, he did away with being able to discuss critical race theory in schools and in the military. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I find it interesting because I think on one hand, I can see how it could be dangerous because, you know, you have folks. It's almost like, you know what it's like? It's almost like, what is the right now? It's like somebody stealing something and then they get, they get punished for it and then they come back and they don't steal anymore. But someone always throws it in front of them, like, hey, but you were a thief before. And you're like, yo, why can I never get over it? But it's the reality of, of the issue. So for critical race theory, it's the same thing. So I think for a lot of folks, I believe they're going to try to do away with things such as that. And that's what's concerning to me. for me. I don't want to go back. You know, but at the same time, I want somebody to do something for the country, too. Just because, again, because you're African-American. You're not going to just easily get my vote, but, you know, it's leaning towards that one. Is it? You see Robert Kennedy jumped on President Trump's side? That was, yeah, he did. That was in Arizona. He did it out yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would put up this thing about electoral college and how they work, but I don't want to keep going down this rabbit hole. I mean, I get both sides. I'm not going to put it up because it basically proves me right, but I'm not... I'm not, I'm not gonna, gonna keep, keep pushing it because anybody, anybody can find anything, anything online to support their opinion. Their opinion. Like I just, I just found one. This, this is the League, League of Women Voters, voters right here. W the L W B. Like anybody can find anything to uh, prove they're right or wrong. It's not about that. I, I think it's about, uh, especially with this platform, it's about education each other and respect for each other's opinion. That's why we're unpopular celebrities. Uh, respect, uh, respect your perspective, perspective especially about, about the electoral. Still, still gonna vote and help. help. Hope my hope vote my helps help influence it. Hey, hey, faith. Uh, uh, let me go ahead. ahead. I appreciate I you out there voting. Vote. Appreciate it. It was, it was sucking. sucking. Nobody, Nobody voted. voted. That would be trash. trash. But, but somebody's gonna do it. it. It's crazy, it's crazy how, how nobody, nobody will go up there and say, "I'm not voting either." Like, like, if, if I'm, I'm busy, busy, I'm not going to vote. Everybody, Everybody just seems like they just they all vote. vote. That's crazy. <laughs>
Let's transition something that's popped in my head. What was it? You said you was it was two topics you really wanted to talk about before we get off the show. We did one of them. Was it another? I'll, I'll, I'll read those when I get off. Uh, oh, the L- LWB. That's the one I just looked at. Uh, Samel said this. The other topic was the uh, culture in the Air Force. Or, uh, not culture, but, uh, yeah, I think you said culture. The other one was private order. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I will circle the culture before I bring some up. Samel Brown says 100%. Car- Carmela Harris, do I disagree with some Dem philosophies? Absolutely. Dems need to shift policy on the border. I agree. I agree. It needs to be secured. I also agree with many GOP policies. I agree. But Trump, nah. So far from presidential, I could go on and on. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm in the same boat, Samel. Like, I feel like I'm caught in the middle. Sir- oh, man. Please forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong. Sir C. Olivia says, I think people need to vote before it becomes time for the primary. So I'm kind of caught in the middle, too. Like, I can, I can see, see both, both angles, angles of the party, of the party and, and I mentioned this before. I mean, throw bullets and spears at me if you want. I'm a registered Republican, all because of Ronald Reagan. Reagan. You know, that's fine. But I, I favor both parties' policies, but my concern is I don't think that, I don't think our country could go another term with former President Trump. I don't. Wow. That's not to say that Kamala Harris is the perfect candidate. She's, she's not. not. She's, she's not. not. I, for me, there's there's a couple of holes or flaws. I mean, I, mean, I won't go too deep into them, but I'll just, I'll say, just say one thing. Like, you know, when they say like, oh, we're, we're going to fix this, this we're going to fix that. that. Um, as far as I, mean, as far as I know, like maybe there's others, but this is one of the times where you had somebody that's running for office. Is part of the problem or was in the seat when it happened? Yeah. And that's being honest. No, you're right. That's always... But you can make an argument. She wasn't the president. She's the vice president. So I'm kind of caught in the middle. You know, I'm leaning more towards Kamala Harris because, I mean, I all see from President Trump's a lot of rat and rave in the name Paul. I don't care about all that. Um, okay, so over to Brett. I was just going to say, uh, that's going to be what Trump brings up. Uh, during the debate, mm-hmm. all these things. Why haven't you been doing? But yo, I'm gonna tell you. He better I'm not, I'm to hear your answers. One thing for sure is, yo, whatever he was doing against President Biden, he better not do with Kamala Harris. Because one thing I know about Kamala Harris, yo, she gonna go at that dude. It's gonna be, yo, it's gonna be, yo, she gonna go at him. Now, whether she's gonna be right or wrong, I I firmly agree that she gonna be able to go where they debate debate for him. I mean, she's a lawyer, so I hope so. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And plus, so. you know, you know like, like, I'll just I'll say this too, because I think it's funny. funny. I think, I think is it? So, so let me say this. Do you <laughs> think, do you think it's amazing <laughs> that we live in a country where someone could be accused of a crime, be found guilty, and he running for president? And it's like, you have one side that's like, yo, it never happened, it's a trick. Then the other side is like, oh, it's not fair. Weird, isn't it? It is. I'm, just being honest. I'm not I'm not saying one side is right and wrong. It's just weird, you know. I just think when they made that policy, nobody thought that would ever happen. So it's like one of those things like when you don't think about it, like, hey, we should put this in the bylaws that if you are a guilty felon, you can you can never vote. They throw that in there. But they never said that you can't run for president because they're like, what fellow would run for president would possibly be able to run for president because of the money and the popularity behind it. Like, so I, it's just some a flaw or not even a flaw, just an oversight that happened when they wrote the Bible. Yeah, and it's like, like for said, Robert Kennedy, he can't run because he don't have the certain amount of vote. He yeah. mentioned that yesterday, like as an independent, he can't run. Independent, for president. yeah. yeah. Because he can't get enough. That's ridiculous. I think, like, if you want to run and you have the money to do your campaign, you should be able to run. I mean, I think yeah, I, I, people should be given as many opportunities and choices as possible. Oh, true. It's like, you want hamburger or hamburger? Yeah. <laughs> what if I want cheeseburger? No, nope, we ain't got that. We ain't got that. <laughs> let's quickly trans- let's just strictly transition to your other point about culture in the Air Force. What you had? Uh, I just think there is none. 
I just think we're lacking it. We uh, try to get in front of it, and we don't ever get there. It's just a lack of uh, culture. Uh, the Marines, the Navy, I know they're the oldest branches, uh, even though, well, the Navy and Army, uh, the oldest, bra- they keep their culture. We change our stuff up. I mean, since I've been in, we change our stuff up so many times. The only thing we haven't changed is our core values and our song. But it seems like everything else has changed. Oh, definitely we did. I mean, we can't say as boys anymore. Oh, shit. Yeah. And, and it's funny. When we sing it, everyone does it different. Some people say Adam boys, some people say the other one. And back to the culture part, I I could be wrong. I never want to be in the Marines. Never want to be in the Navy. Never want to be in the Army. I I love the branch that I'm in. With that part, I wonder if the Marine Corps him ever changed one word or two words. If how, who, I guess who, would be the front runners to change and how would they do it? Rhetorically, my thought process would be the generals would be, because they only have a few, the generals would be the front runners behind it, led by every, everybody else. Uh, culture, tradition, I guess both, but tradition. We'll say tradition right now, but culture too. Yeah, I agree both of them. Yeah. I, I just, I, I do find it interesting after all this time we had the Airman's Creed. Some people don't know it, or some people mumble it underneath their breath when you're in a large forum. And we did it the other night at the senior NCO induction ceremony on JBSA right now. Oh, no. And it was like a shock. Oh. It was like a shock. When, they you know, knew it. Was like, we're going to do the Airman's Creed. Everybody like, we're going to do the Airman's Creed. And remember when it first came out, people were doing it loud and loud. Wait, 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 warrior. Now it's like, man, leader. Warrior. Sounds you like know? a cult. Yeah, it just it sounds really just culty. Feel like, I think I the think core values are, are fine. I just think, and I think, I think the, song the song is fine, fine too. I think personally, I think they never should have changed the song or altered it. Right. It was fine the way it was. I mean, what's going to be next? They're going to say, and boys, give them the good. Well, everybody in the Air Force is not a pilot. Everybody else, there's other people that give them guns. So we can't say that. We're going to say, um, no, we don't even say Adam boys now. I don't Adam know. Adam Adam all. Adam, Adam now. Adam now. Give him the AT4. AT4. Adam now. <laughs> Give him the H back. What are they going to yeah. do that at you? You know? Down with Bob's part of Flames from under. Flames from under. What, what if there are people? What if there are people that do other stuff like Adam now, spot a parish view from under? You know, are they going to change it? Because they go like, oh, everybody's not included. Like, I, yeah. I don't you know what's crazy? But if you think about the Marine Corps song, the Marine Corps hymn, because I won't call it a song, the hymn, it involves everything the Marines do at all times. They never change at all. <laughs> Give them the four. Hey, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's Give the forks crazy. crazy. Uh, here we, we go. Right, we right, train right. the hell out of whoa, whoa. We, we train the hell out of our airmen. We want the best and the brightest. We are technic. We are technically technical force driven by support forces. We can deep dive this, but I think we have culture, tradition. Yes, we lack. Okay. Best and brightest. Oh, we want the best and brightest. Eh. We'll take we'll take, we'll take just about any. Oh, uh, there's some, and I'm one of them. I ain't the best and brightest at all. And they let me come in, and I'm sure I'm not the worst. There are people under me also. Uh, I think we embody uh, those values as teams, but as the USAF, uh, we are too focused on being individual. I agree. I agree. Him. Yeah, we. Are you going back to going back to Samuel Brown's point where he said when he says that uh, we are technical force driven by support forces. So I would to give some grace to the Air Force. We're different than the Marines and our Army. The Marines and the Marines, you know, they're there to pretty much kill, 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 kill. kill, kill. The Army next in line. Navy is a maritime force. 
But the Air Force is more than just planes. The stuff that comes outside of pilots, the technical expertise is used to support flying the aircraft. My issue is, something to what she Flossie said is, is that we have so many specialties, whereas when we try to tell the troops, we need to do this. Case in point, let's say we said, we need all of our airmen to be ready to secure an airbase. They said, well, yo, that's not my job. Hmm. That's what the cops do. It was like, yo, you're an airman, meaning you are a military member. You got to be able to use a weapon. You got to be able to defend the post. They were like, that's a cop's job. Mm -hmm. As an airman, you need to be able to put up a tent. You need to be able to set up a food kitchen and system. But that's a services job. Mm -hmm. But the Marines don't do that. Mm -hmm. When they say, hey, look, hey, look, uh, cook, we need you to get out there and secure, uh, go on patrol with us. You think they're going to say something? No. In the Army, when we rode, when I did convoys with the Army, they was like, yo, one thing is certain. No one on this convoy is a passenger. Everybody is part of the convoy team. So, cop, I know you a cop. This is how you drive the vehicle. This is how you change the tire. This is how you call the nine line. PA photographer that's coming with us. This is how you secure your, your zone or your sector when we deploy. Now, everybody did everybody's job. But for the Air Force, it just seems like it's been difficult to get people to get that concept. I think because we're focused so much on your, your job, knowing your job, your job, knowing your job, knowing your job, knowing your job that now it's like focused on... When I tell you the mission, the mission, and the mission is so, it's not big, bold letters like a CDC or anything. Uh, so it's hard for people to wrap. Now, it's easier for cops because everybody's asked, like, nobody's asking a cop, hey, we need you to go in finance and go do it, make sure everybody's LES is done. Right? Nobody's asking that, but they're asking finance to go out and do what cops do. Yeah, because, yeah, because and, and, that's and that's part, part of the problem, problem too. too. Like, like there, are there are certain functions in the military that are wartime, wartime functions. Yep. Now, now a, finance a finance troop may argue, hey, hey you need to get paid, paid while you're fighting a war. war. But what, what is, is the, the primary focus during a conflict? conflict. War, war fighting, right? right? In, in the, the field, field is, is it critical, critical for a finance troop? I put like this if if you need bodies. Are you, Are you going to say, say we're not going to pull the finance, finance troop because they need to be able to pay people? people. No. no. Likely not, not right? right? If you need a person packing parachutes, not just they still got to pack parachutes, right? But in the end, if you need to, you can pull them to do defense, right? Right. But a cop, if they say, we need more people to process finance by travel vouchers, you're not going to pull a cop for that. Right, right. And it's not that it's it's, it's, it's not that it's not important. important. It's just it's not, not critical to to a conflict, an ongoing conflict. conflict. Usually, Usually, you'll find, find your support, support functions. Like, like if you need somebody, somebody to repair an airfield, airfield, I can I see them pulling a the cop for that. that. Like, hey, look, we ran out of engineers. I'm going to show you how to use this equipment so we can repair this airfield because the airfield will get repaired. We can't launch jets. We can't launch jets. We can't defend where we're at. It's the same thing. To me, and, and I, think I think I would argue security, security forces, forces in general, general needs to be more aware and proud of that because, because we are the one, one, one with the largest career field for a reason. reason. Two, our, our mission, mission transcends, transcends from peacetime to wartime. To I would almost, almost argue, argue I'm going to say better than, than most because you still got your EOD folks, you've got your SEER, PJs, or whatever. But for defenders, defenders we're, we're going to be in a fight peace time and that, that says a lot. It's mostly DC, DC. Those are not over the horizon in place. In place, in place wartime, wartime functions. functions. Those are home, home station functions. functions. Yeah. yeah. Good. As well said. Better said than I, I did. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't know. know but it's my, my uh, gripe uh, about that. Is just we just our tradition sucks, man. We just need to. Keep it going. Like, whatever happened in 47 when we became an Air Force, like, some of that stuff, and I'm sure some of it is, I just don't know what, besides the core values. What else? Yeah, I think it's the 
I think it's core values in the, the, the when I talked about that the other night at the speech for the professional arms, like and not saying that you don't find Marines on TikTok. I'm not saying because they are. Of course. But I think in some cases we have lost what it means to to be in the military. There are certain things where we had to give up. And some people say it's not fair. Why should I have to give up this and that? Why can't I go to a political rally in uniform? I'm still an American citizen. But you're a military member. You're, you're, you're supposed to be separated from that. And yes, why? Because I Just because I'm in the military and I wear a uniform, why can't I do a TikTok video um, doing um, uh, working in uniform? Because the uniform means something. It's, 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 it's what the public expects. Like when the public sees somebody do something wrong in uniform, you don't think they're going to be in an uproar? I mean, they're going to be in a It's different than you wearing a McDonald's uniform or wearing a suit and tie for Apple. When you wear a uniform, you stick out like a sword. So Mel Brown says, in my opinion, what we, what we are talking about are cultural traditions. That sounds like incongruent peacetime and wartime functions. Just my two cents. I agree. I agree. You a bomb for that one. I agree with you. As doctor. As doctor. And policy. And policy. Yeah, I agree with you, OG. I agree. I just don't know how we get to that point. You know, I yeah, think yeah. the elimination of bad patches will help. <laughs> I'm just we'll being honest. I do. Hey, my thing is, once you start the train to try to make the train disappear. Is not a thing. The train still it it's already on track. It's already running. You could say, "Hey, the train's not here," but everybody sees the train. It's it's not gone, and people will always remember their job is more important than the mission. And most people, do I believe that? No, but that's what a belief is. Their job is what they do every day, what they see every day, what they get praised for every day, and what they get in trouble for. So that would be the most important part, not the mission. Yeah. Uh, but that's just me. That's just me. Anyway, two hours. I'm ready to go. Oh, man. Man, I thought it was something else. The weekend, we can wait another time for it. It was something else I wanted to throw out. That's cool. As always, we appreciate y'all being in the comments. Let's see. Faith says we keep coming back to Faith Donovan says we keep coming back to that motivation versus discipline combo we had, Chief. I agree. I agree. I just I'll say this and then we we can we can uh, transition to closing. Um I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like sometimes I'm the old man on the porch looking at the kids out the street playing. I'm just feeling grumpy. You know what I mean? Like why are they paying so low? Why are these socks is so high? How come they wear that stuff on their shirt? You know, and they probably was the same way when I came in. And so I admit, I am an old school dude that, you know, are used to certain things. What's up, bro? What's up, Corey? Missed you on the show earlier, man. You always got some crazy stuff to bring up. Good stuff, I uh, might add. But anyway, so I think that I always I had this thing. I feel like Old school, old school is not school always a bad thing. <coughs> it's not. I think old school, old school new school should be like a gumbo. You put it all together and they all mix it. Mm -hmm. but, but I don't subscribe to the idea that you got to stick with the new school. Like whatever the new stuff is, we need to go in that direction. It's not always the case, man. I think we are losing, we are losing the service before self. There's one core value, I would say, that is a problem with service, service before self. We have, we have lost that in some way. Because we, a lot of, a lot of people feel like, like it's about, about them, them, not about the air. I'll, I'll just say that. that. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, I won't touch that. Because uh, we'll get into another hour long debate. Uh, mm -hmm. Struthers, man, wish you were in here earlier. Uh, first of all, appreciate everybody coming on the show. Uh, appreciate everybody putting their comments in uh, and making the show go, uh, even about the voting, which I'm still not going to vote. But uh, appreciate everybody's comments. I'm going to go back and read for Charles. I'm going to go back and read that, uh, that thing you put in there, the uh, website. I, I think it's the same one I found, but uh, we'll, we'll go back and read it. But appreciate everybody on faith. 
Appreciate you for coming on the show because it is the corner. Everybody had the opportunity to come on. Some people missed it, but we'll be coming around again uh, in September. Uh, so, uh, so looking, looking forward, forward to that. that. Uh, uh, see y'all in two weeks. weeks. Uh, got, got a couple, couple of good, good guests that, that should be coming on the next couple of weeks. weeks. So, so that, that should be cool. Be cool. Or months. Uh, uh, so, so that, that should be cool. Be cool. Uh, that's, that's it. it. You got anything? Hey, Sha- again, again, thanks for everybody for, for tuning in. If you are a new viewer or watcher, thank you for joining us. You can find us on all the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, You can watch some of our old shows, too, if you happen to miss it. Feel free to drop us a comment if you got any ideas for the show or some constructive feedback. Uh, We listen to and read every single one of them. Uh, If you want to support us, there's other ways of doing it. I won't go into it now, but you can send us a message. I know the last show we got quite a bunch of support because it costs a lot of time and money to do the show. And we do it because we love it. But whatever you can give us, love offering the sponsorships you can throw our way. Well, help us continue to do these shows. And then one more plug to what Pete said, the corner. Man, all these comments is great, but it's always good to have you guys actually come on and chat with us and hang out with us. That's the whole door in the corner, man. Think of it as hanging out at the water cooler or on the street corner. And it doesn't always have to be what we're talking about. And we will take good care of yourself. Next, next show is coming up in a couple of weeks. weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll skip, skip next, next week, week, and then we'll go in the next week in September, September probably before the Air, Force, Air, Force, Air Forces Air Force Association Force Conference. Conference. Um, we're, we're looking to have a guest show there, there, but we will we'll, we'll advertise and have it out. But, but appreciate, appreciate all you guys. Thank, thank you so, so much, much for listening. Tune in. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Peace. Out. We are out.